or so. So uh, give us about a minute and we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you. Okay, everybody, thank you very much for uh, joining us this afternoon. If someone could really quick uh, for, for, uh, for me uh, put a yes in the questions box. I just want to make sure I'm coming through nice and clear for everybody. Great. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, everybody. I want to go ahead and welcome you to our Value Charts webinar series presented through Bloomberg. My name is Dave Aquino, and I'm the Options Live Trading Room Specialist here at MicroQuant. And uh, today's webinar is actually going to be Trading Intraday Options with Value Bars and MQ Momentum. Again, today I'm going to discuss uh, selecting stocks and options suitable for intraday trading. Then we're going to go ahead and explore MicroQuant's value-based price indicator we call value charts, and by extension, also our value bars indicator too. Then I'll discuss our proprietary momentum indicator, MQ Momentum. And then lastly, I will show you an options trade setup that we regularly use in our options live trading room and then demonstrate it for you on intraday charts. If you think of any questions during my presentation, please go ahead and submit them via the GoToWebinar side menu. I will try to answer questions at the time we're on that specific topic. Now, if I can't get to it during the presentation, I will answer all submitted questions in the question and answer segment at the end of the presentation. I'll make sure that all questions are answered before we leave today. Okay, risk disclaimer. We at MicroQuant want you to know that trading or investing carries a high level of risk and is not suitable for all persons. Before deciding to trade or invest, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and ability to tolerate risk. This content is subject to change at any time without notice and is provided for the sole purpose of education and assistance in making independent investment decisions. ValueCharts.com has taken reasonable measures to ensure the accuracy of the information contained herein. However, ValueCharts does not guarantee its accuracy and is not liable for any loss or damage which may result directly or indirectly from such content or from an inability to access such information or any delay in or failure of the transmission or the receipt of any instruction or notification in connection herewith. Any past performance results are shown for illustration and example only, are hypothetical, and as such have many inherent limitations. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those shown. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. CFTC Rule 4.41. This is a U.S. government required disclaimer. The CFTC wants you to know that futures and options trading not only has large potential rewards, but also large potential risks. You must be aware of the risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the futures and options market. Do not trade with any money you cannot afford to lose. This is neither a solicitation nor an offer to buy or sell futures, stocks, or options on the same. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those discussed on this website. The past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. If you have any questions on either of these two disclaimers, please feel free to contact us at MicroQuant. 
Okay, thank you for the patience there. Okay, moving on to the topic of today's webinar, trading intraday options with value bars and NQ momentum. Again, I'm going to first be talking about the selection criteria I use to select good intraday trading stocks and options. Second, I'm going to introduce you to MicroQuant's proprietary value charts and value bars indicator, and then the I and then the idea behind an objective value indicator. Thirdly, I'll explore MicroQuant's NQ momentum indicator and how it works. Lastly, I'm going to review our our version of trading price and momentum divergences with options. Okay, first question that comes up, which stocks and options should I trade? And this is a really important, especially if we are scalping or trading intraday. So basically what we've done is to, to screen for some good intraday candidates. The first thing we did was pulled up a list of the 50 most active individual stocks and ETFs by put and call volume. Then we rank those top 50 in order of highest to lowest specific dollar value for the stock prices. Then the next thing we did, we evaluated the top 20 of that resulting list by the highest daily average true range. So once we've taken those three steps, here's the resulting uh, top 10 list. Uh, again, what we have here is my list of the top 10 stocks and ETFs with suitable options, specifically weekly options, for intraday trading. There are On this list, there are six individual stocks and four ETFs. Please note that the top five right here are all individual stocks. We monitor and trade all six stocks in the options live trading room. Here's the, here's the sixth one, Tesla. Okay, we actively trade these three intraday, Google, Apple, Amazon. Uh, again, and these other two, Netflix and LinkedIn, we uh, trade these every once in a while as swing trades, um, but we also utilize them in our credit spreads. Okay, we trade the weekly options contracts for these six stocks. This gives us the flexibility to pick strike prices that allow us to carefully use leverage to increase return, provide great option liquidity at the strike prices we want, and then the bid and ask spread of the options is narrower because of increased option liquidity. And then there's plenty of trading volume at with these five, I'm sorry, with these six stocks and their options, and that allows us quicker entries and exits, and also allows us to trade larger position sizes. Now, now the way we trade these options, these weekly options, is pretty straightforward. We utilize directional trades. We buy and sell puts and calls. We specifically, we trade the in-the-money options with a delta of 70. The delta 70s give us a good response to changes in the prices of the underlying stock, but also keeps a good aspect of leverage by not costing too much. We, we found it uh, for the Google, Amazon, and, and, and um, Google, Amazon, and Apple, the uh, delta 70s normally run anywhere from $8.00 to $12 to $15 per contract. It just depends on the day of the week and uh, the individual stock, but, but that's the range of, um, of the price of the options. Uh, also, there's plenty of trading volume near the current prices, near the current strike prices, and, um, and again, specifically, we trade single options when we do uh, directional trades. This actually lowers the commission cost uh, for our trading. Now I know that there are option traders out there that swear by spreads. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll do debit spreads, put spreads, call spreads. Accomplishes the same thing we're doing here. However, by doing so, we basically double our commission cost. So the, the reason for the spreads usually is the case that um, we want to uh, deflect some of the theta decay things like that, but because we're trading these intraday, we really don't have um, 
much exposure to theta decay. We were just using single options, buying and then selling positions. And again, because we're doing these directional trades on these six stocks, there's higher liquidity, faster trade fills, and good fill prices. Okay, now for the indicators that we use. Uh, we trade these equity options intraday with MicroQuant's proprietary value charts and value bars indicator and also MicroQuant's MQ momentum indicator. And I'm going to go through and talk about them for you. Now before we can start talking about our indicators, I would like to first touch on what we believe are the three most important components of technical analysis. It's price, value, and momentum. By combining all three components together, we believe it provides the most complete view of the current makeup of a market. Now, let me go in here. Okay. The tools we're going to use to gauge these three components will be for price, we're going to use traditional price charts, open, high, low, close bar charts. For value, again, we're going to use value charts and value bars. And I will get into that and then describe the objective value for you. And then for momentum, we're going to use our MQ momentum indicator. Now, I just want to touch on the nature of value charts, which is to provide an objective evaluation of the current price based on real past prices within an analysis period. Now, the, the most important word there is objective. Traditionally in the financial markets we've talked about value from a standpoint of uh, value mutual funds. Uh, something is underpriced so it represents a good value. All those uses of the term value are subjective. Either it's someone's opinion as an analyst or um, it's within a value fund so that it's understood that what we're trying to do is buy undervalued uh, but all those uh, uh, explorations of value are all subjective um, it is someone's opinion with with the nature of value charts is that we provide an objective evaluation based on the past prices within the analysis period that preceded the current price Okay, now just follow along with me here. With value charts, we will see that prices are placed within five primary valuation zones. You can see the first valuation zone is this green zone in the center. This represents fair value. The next zones are the yellow zones above and below the green zone, and this represents um, moderately overvalued and moderately undervalued levels. Now then above the yellow zones are the red extreme valuation zones. We have significantly overvalued and down here we have significantly undervalued levels. Now historically prices are contained within the fair valuation zone roughly 66 percent of the time. Next within the, the upper yellow zone the moderately overvalued level prices are in that zone roughly 16 percent of the time and then likewise the moderately undervalued level prices are in that zone roughly 16 percent of the time now for the extreme valuation zones prices are in those zones roughly two I'm sorry one to two and a half percent excuse my handwriting one to two and a half percent of the time okay combined so both significantly overvalued and significantly undervalued. Now these percentages can vary slightly depending on the market you trade and the indicator settings that we use. But as you can see, prices tend to stay within fair value the majority of the time and just periodically enter moderately and significantly under and overvalued levels. Okay. Now what we see is again with this this is the value charts indicator you can see here on the Bloomberg screen as prices are moving up and down relative to each other we can see the majority of the time prices stay within the green valuation zones okay now 
when prices move into moderately overvalued and moderately or significantly overvalued levels, you can see that they don't spend much time in those valuation zones and prices and prices tend to migrate back into fair value. See these, uh, this zone here, the prices tend to go back into fair value. Same thing here and here. When we get to this level, you see it quickly comes back to fair value. Okay, that's what it looks like on the value charts indicator. Again, here significantly undervalued. Prices tend to move back into moderately undervalued and then back into fair value. Now, it's kind of hard to trade um, a little bit on this particular price chart on this indicator. So what we've done is combine value charts with our traditional open high low close bar charts you can see that here and that's where we get value bars and actually this is what I primarily trade with value bars you can see the the, the normal construct of a uh, open high low close bar chart we have okay here's the body of the bar here's the open and here's the close you can see that right down here okay but what you can see is placed directly onto the body of the of the uh, open high low close bar is this red segment at the bottom and yellow segment here in the middle and at the very top we have a green bar segment okay here let me clean that up a little bit and you can see that what that represents now is prices in the lower third of this bar is in significantly undervalued level prices move up moderately undervalued and then at the at the end price prices move up during this bar it closes in fair value okay and you can see as prices continue to move up and down prices move into moderately overvalued moderately undervalued significantly undervalued and then significantly overvalued and all the same while we have this green fair valuation zones like right here okay so this makes it much easier to watch both price and value at the same time. And this is what we're going to use. Okay, just double checking, no questions so far. Excellent. Okay, now for the third component of technical analysis, momentum. Uh, specifically momentum of price movements. The tool that we're going to use is MQ Momentum. You can see it right here. Now what MQ Momentum does, it seeks to gauge the momentum of a market, which is the strength of a market It is as it's moving through the, uh, when it's moving in one direction or another. Here's a downward move, you see the corresponding bearish momentum. Prices move up, what we see is uh, increasing bullish momentum. Okay, now this indicator, MQ Momentum, is very similar to a moving average convergence divergence indicator, MACD. Everybody's familiar with that. But MQ Momentum is actually a proprietary indicator designed by Mark Helwig. Mark took the components of his favorite momentum indicators and basically created a hybrid that kept the most important uh, momentum factors together. Now looking at MQ Momentum down here, we see that it's comprised of this blue line, it's the indicator line, then you have this pink line, which is the slow line, and then you have the histogram bars, which is basically uh, details the spread between the two indicator lines. Generally, when uh, MQ momentum is bullish, you can see right here, you can see that the histogram bars are green and positive, the slope of the indicator line is also positive. When prices are falling and momentum is carrying prices down, we see that the histogram bars are red and are also growing, and that the uh, indicator line has a negative slope. Okay. This way you can see that MQ Momentum provides a clear, real-time view of both the direction and the strength of price movement in a market. Okay, now just to put forth the indicators 
again that we're going to use value charts and value bars I utilize a five bar analysis period intraday MQ momentum it uses the uh, default 3255 setting now MQ regression is something that I'll have on my charts also and basically it's a trend direction indicator and that will have a 100 bar analysis period and again the basic charting form that I use is the open high low close uh, bar chart okay any questions so far on our indicators thing looks pretty clear okay so now for the trade setup we're going to use these indicators on it is a price and momentum price momentum divergence trade now let's define what is a divergence a divergence is when the price and the indicator in this case momentum are no longer correlated this is when price is making an equally high or low prices while the indicator weakens in that direction uh, definition of a bullish divergence prices go equally low or lower than previous lows but bearish momentum weakens so we expect prices to turn around and go up for a bearish divergence prices are going equally high or higher than the previous highs but the bullish momentum weakens so we're looking for prices to actually fall okay let's go ahead and just take a look at this on a chart it's a little bit easier to see <clears throat> in this case this is an example of a di bullish divergence so prices are falling okay this is the first low here you can see the corresponding MQ momentum histogram bars are here you can see that uh, as prices are falling downside momentum or bearish momentum is quite strong the indicator uh, has long red histogram bars prices pull back and they make an equally low set of lows here but when we look at the indicator we see the downside momentum is much weaker at this point so at this point what we actually expect are prices to go up okay so that is a divergence prices are making an equally low or sometimes lower price but the the indicator in this case MQ momentum is actually showing that the downside momentum is actually weakening so we're looking for prices to move in the opposite direction okay here's an example of a bearish divergence in this case prices are now moving up you can see this is the first set of highs you see the histogram bars are nice positive and strong prices pull back slightly and then they make a second set of highs this in this case a higher set of highs then we look at the MQ momentum's histogram bars and we compare the two you see here that the MQ momentum histogram bars are lower or weaker than the first set even though we're making higher prices in this case this is a divergence so we're actually looking for prices to fall okay all right so now you're thinking I do divergence trades fairly often uh, what's the difference here the difference you'll soon see is that we combine a value aspect into our trade entry and exit points to help mitigate risk and extend our profits so here's the specific trade criteria what we're doing is we're watching for a price uh, watching price for a recent high or low then we're looking for a pullback in the opposite direction and then third another attempt at a higher or lower high low price now here's where it's a little different the next step we do is we sorry it's a terrible star we monitor value charts or in our case value bars because we want to see an over or under valued level at the second high or low price does that make sense uh, we want to see an over or undervalued level at higher or low price that's yellow or red then if we see that we'll go ahead and compare the momentum indicator to verify the negative correlation okay that's the difference okay let's look at it from the standpoint of uh, 
uh, the chart. Okay, again, this is a bullish divergence. You see prices are coming down. Okay, we see this first low right here. Okay, you see the corresponding histogram bars for low number one. Okay, nice and strong to the downside. Prices come back up and we make a second equally low, sometimes lower. But the second at the second low, the next thing we look at is to see if it's in moderately undervalued or significantly undervalued levels. So basically we're looking for yellow or red. In this case, we see yellow, so we have permission to go long this divergence if the indicator line is the if the indicator is diverging. So we look down here, we see MQ momentum has barely any downside momentum, barely any red histogram bars. It's definitely diverging because it, the downside momentum is much weaker, so we expect prices to go up. And at this point, we'll actually enter a Delta 70 call position, and then we'll hold that position until the prices start moving in our direction. Okay? That is a bullish divergence with specific emphasis on the value, uh, the, va the moderately undervalued level of the, uh, the second low. Again, we'll look at this from a bearish standpoint. Here, prices are moving up. Here's the first set of highs. You see the corresponding histogram bars are nice and tall and strong. Prices pull back. Here's the second set of highs. Okay. Again, momentum is much, is weaker than the previous uh, momentum on the previous highs. So, and then we double check on these highs that we hit at least moderately overvalued, and in this case, significantly overvalued level. So at this point, we will go ahead and take a delta 70 put position because we are looking for prices to fall. So we'll go ahead and enter that order. And then as prices fall, we'll go ahead and take profits down here. Again, that is how we utilize the value indicator to help us enter these uh, these positions. Does everybody kind of get a good feeling for, for understanding why we use value here? Again, now that you've seen the divergence trade, again, the difference is you see we enter at a moderately under or overvalued level, and in some cases significantly under, under or overvalued level. And this added value safeguard allows us to enter a subjectively higher or lower entry point. Therefore, we're lowering our risk. You see, we enter the at a point where it becomes increasingly likely that prices will turn around and move back into fair value in the direction we want our trade to move. Okay? That's the difference. Okay? Again, let's walk through the trade one more time and then look at some charts. Okay? First of all, verify that we have a valid divergence trade. On the second high or low, enter at over or undervalued levels, either a yellow bar segment or a red bar segment. And then we go ahead and buy a put or a call, a directional trade, based on the outlook that the prices will be moving in the opposite direction the, uh, of the previous highs and lows. A stop loss, if you want to set it, is placed beyond the higher, of course you want to set it, it came out wrong. Stop loss is placed beyond the higher or lower peak of the recent highs or lows. I'll show you an example of that. And then we actually look to take profits at the opposite under or over valuation levels. And I will show you that on a, on a chart. Okay, here are the chart examples we're going to use. Okay, now what we are doing in this particular chart is that we see this set of highs right here. Okay, prices uh, slowly come up. This is the first set of histogram bars, nice and tall and strong. Prices pull back, they come up, and they make this. It's not nearly equally high high, but there is a moderately overvalued level here. You look here, there's the histogram bars, and the, the first thing we look at is equally high highs, yes. 
we're looking at can we enter at moderately undervalued I'm sorry moderately overvalued levels an upper yellow bar segment or upper red bar segment yes we can do that look at the histogram bars is price is it diverging from the price action yes it is upside momentum is much is weaker than the first set of highs so at this bar right here we will go ahead and buy a delta 70 put because we expect prices to come down here. Now we enter this position here at moderately overvalued. Now we look to exit at the opposite value level. So it's the lower yellow bar segments. Now the one thing we actually do in the options like trading room, we extend this a little bit. Now if you look, we're getting long here. We want to sell maybe here. Okay, that's the first yellow bar segment. The difference is what we do in the options live trading room. We watch the slope of the blue indicator line. As long as the slope is negative, we will maintain our short our short position or a, or a put position because we continue to expect the price to fall. As long as the indicator line is negative, the slope is negative, we will go ahead and stay in the position. And usually it's the case, you see how the histogram bars are shortening? I'm sorry, are still long. When it shortens right here, the indicator line starts to go flat. That's usually where we will exit, right down here. Okay. Also, another thing is we'll also look for red bar segments down here, and that provides us with some pretty good exit points also. Okay. Another thing that um, we do in the options live trading room is once we have posi once we have a position that's in the, that's profitable. We will actually, if we're trading 10 contracts, we'll sell two here, two here, two here, and two here. It doesn't matter as long as we're taking profits as prices move in our direction because we know eventually prices will snap back. I mean, those are just the basic mechanics of the trade and, and how we pursue it. Again, we can, we, once we enter it moderately overvalued, we look to sell at the opposite valuation level. But again, another wrinkle, we maintain our position as long as the slope of the indicator line is negative. And then once it goes flat or starts to turn on the histogram, that's where we're going to get out, plus the moderately under, significantly undervalued level. So not a good place to take profits. Okay? All right, next chart. Here we have a bearish divergence. And this is kind of interesting because, again, two-minute chart in Apple, prices come up, make this first set of highs here's the histogram bars nice and tall and strong prices pull up pull back I'm sorry they make another set of highs this is higher than the previous highs and we have a significantly overvalued level here okay I think I made my circles too big it's a little hard to see right there so we go ahead with some Delta 70 puts and we we hold the position and the prices start to move down in the direction we're expecting. I see you see the moderately undervalued levels here. We can be selling some of our position here, but all of a sudden you see prices turn back up. Make this sec this third set of highs. Uh, we watch the histogram bars. Here's the histogram bars for the third set of highs. Here's the histogram bars for the second set of highs. And here's the, the histogram bars for the third set of uh, highs. So you can see this is a double bearish divergence. So if we're able to sell our entire position here, prices pop up, make a hit, enter moderately overvalued again. There is another divergence. So we can go ahead and get uh, uh, Delta 70 puts in this case here. And we'll go ahead and hold that. Now we're here at moderately undervalued, but we see that the indicator line slope is still negative. So we hold the position. We hold it all through this level here. Histogram bars are nice and strong and long, and it's not until this point here that the indicator line actually goes flat, and that corresponds to these points here. So we're actually able to take that trade from up here all the way to down here, and then sell the position. Okay. So in this case, if we're quick with these trades, we can take. We have a profitable trade here, and we have a profitable trade here. And then um, we have good indications that if we're utilizing our MQ momentum 
and our value bars very well, we stay in the trade longer. You see, if we if we know that this is diverging, the question becomes is where do we get where do we buy the puts? If we're just using traditional open high low close charts, it's hard to see the value. You can't see it. But with value charts, we have a lot of security knowing if we're getting in and significantly overvalued and prices only stay in the red valuation zones one to two and a half percent of the time. There's really no other direction to go. Oops, I'm sorry. There's really no other direction to go um, other than other than down. Uh, hold on one second here. I, I apologize. I think I lost my screen. Oops. I moved to the next one. Yeah, once we're in moderate, significantly overvalued levels, the only place we can really go is down. Okay, here significantly if we're trying to get in at the yellow bar segments how much upside risk do we have before we get stopped out not very much but if we enter here the stop loss is much higher does that make sense okay that's why utilizing value bars is very important and it provides us with two things it provides us with a level of security knowing that yes it could actually run up some more but the likelihood of it is less than if I'm buying in fair value and the fact that um, <clears throat> chances are the prices are going to get pushed back into fair value okay and then if we're utilizing our MQ momentum indicator well we can see how the um, the divergence is forming up and then we can see that the rate of downside price movement is actually quite steep with the indicator line and that keeps us in the trade longer. So instead of taking profits just here, we actually take profits down here, and that's a big difference. It increases the overall profitability of our trading. Uh, hi, Patrick. Yes, I'm sorry I didn't get to your question a little sooner. This is a two-minute chart. Um, I have traded three-minute charts before, five-minute charts intraday, well, if you see a good setup, five-minute charts are okay. Uh, usually, to be honest, I use tick charts when I'm trading Apple. 250 uh, tick bar charts. I use that also. Yes, you you do have to be quick, but the the benefit of it is it really is a straightforward type trade. And usually, when you see prices are coming up like this and they're making a second set of highs, because you're watching momentum so closely. Uh, you do this trade enough, you'll know that if we're right here in prices and the histogram bars are only this high, chances are before you get into a significantly or moderately overvalued level, you're not going to get as high as this previous set. Okay, You, you know you're not going to get that high. So you're watching for it. And another thing that sometimes what we do in the room, I kind of forgot this, it helps with the entry. Do you see, bear with me here. Do you see this, um, maybe it's in on a different chart. I apologize. It's kind of uh, off the cuff. Um, here and here. Okay. As we go up and we make this third set of highs, do you see how we have two yellow bar segments, one on this bar and two on this bar? Question is, which one do we get in on? Okay. The trick is I usually watch the MQ momentum indicator line. If the slope is still positive, I don't get in on that bar. I wait for the, the bar in which the indicator line actually goes negative. Uh, let me try to see. You see here, this is the first bar, and this is the second bar. It's almost on both sides of that. So when I see that the indicator line actually either goes flat or turns negative, on a bearish divergence, that's where I'll enter. I will enter on this one. I don't care if it moves a little bit in the direction of my trade because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm timing it so that I get in when it starts to move in the direction I'm going. Okay. Sometimes it's not this, this clean. You see how here we're, we're just, we're going from a steep positive slope and then we're going 
a, a, a much flatter slope to where it turns over. If you watch MQ Momentum's histogram bars, they actually start to fall before this rolls over. And it's the same thing that goes on here, but in the opposite direction. You trade with these indicators long enough, you, you get a very good feel for the histogram bars and the indicator lines and how they interact. But again, to answer your main question, yes, it is kind of quick. Um, sometimes I'll do uh, a trade like this with 10 contracts of Apple. Um, it may move all of two dollars, two dollars and fifty cent on a seven, on a two hundred and fifty tick bar chart, and um, it might last just ten minutes. And you know, two dollars and fifty cents on a, a delta seventy put is um, two dollars on a ten dollar option. So again, I, I, my favorite trades are divergence trades intraday just like what I'm showing you okay hopefully I kinda ans answered your question there Patrick if, if let me go ahead and go to our last example here um, <clears throat> of this trade now here's a good example of this is real life sometimes divergences are not textbook clean I wish they were but again when you do these enough and you understand value you can see opportunities other people can't. Here's a good example. You see this set of new highs in Apple, nice and strong and tall. This is the histogram uh, profile. Uh, prices come back down. Now, what we would love to see is prices to come down and make an equally high high, right up here, right? Or higher. Sometimes it doesn't happen like that. But what we do see is prices do come up, and they come up enough to hit here a moderately undervalued level I'm sorry moderately overvalued level so upper yellow bar segments and we look at the histogram bars and this is what we see now we don't we don't actually jump all over this trade right at first but if we're playing price action we're just watching and we do see the moderately overvalued levels so it is a, a, a relatively good opportunity the main thing that we're watching is momentum you see it's much weaker than all these bars here. So chances are if we see that this actually turns, then it may be an opportunity to, to take some profits. Okay, And what I would do is, again, while I'm watching this, first of all, we do have a nice doji pattern right here. Okay, And that's something we also watch sometimes, a doji pattern. Okay, And the fact is on the next bar, the histogram bars start to fall. Okay, I'm watching MQ momentum. See, we're positive all through here. Positive. When this drops, MQ momentum's indicator line goes flat. Okay, and then it looks like prices will continue to fall. So we could actually take a position, uh, either this bar or this bar here, and delta 70 put, and then just just hold it until we get at least to the opposite value level, or in this case we watch the indicator line fall to this point here and then get out. Now if we're looking and trading standard divergences we may not take this trade. I mean we probably won't but because you have value bars the, the most important point is you see that it hits moderately overvalued levels here. Okay and then utilizing your MQ momentum indicator you actually see that it starts to fall here and that the indicator line goes negative. Okay, and then when you're timing your exit, you're watching for these significantly undervalued levels, and those are s signals that you know we could possibly get out here and here. We always know that trades occur within a a, a, a specific price um, size. Okay, I'm not going to see Apple drop twenty dollars if I'm in a put. I'd love to but I'm not going to. It's only going to go a certain distance before it pulls back. That's the, the advantage value charts give to you, especially when we get to an extreme level. You, you get to the idea that this could pull back. Okay, When we quickly hit these significantly undervalued levels, then these prices could pull up. Okay, There's some, some intricacies I don't really have the time to show you, 
but if you come to the option like trading room I can also show you that um, these red bar segments they sometimes this is what we call a value migration when I see this usually it corresponds to prices moving down very quickly you can see here's the here's a support level here here's a support level here here's the support level here and see what happens when it breaks through it has, it has these red bar segments here here and here okay this is significantly undervalued but also it represents to me that these bars happen very quickly especially on tick charts but um, but anyway those are insights that you can get by utilizing our value charts value bars indicator plus MQ momentum so if you'd like to to take a take a look at that learn a little bit more you're more than welcome to to contact me or um, or uh, microquant and, and we can help you with that you're welcome to come into the options live trading room see how I trade so I mean at this point these are the, the, the main charts that we have it is a straightforward um, trade um, again it's not anything crazy specific with the options not doing complex strategies because what we're doing is in and out utilizing leverage liquidity and these great setups that actually most of the time for me have quick moves and we're in and out relatively quickly okay does anybody have any um, additional questions Oops. Um, questions I don't have any on the screen I'll give it a couple of seconds here okay um, if nobody has any questions let me just first uh, again now that I've answered your questions and and I'd like to just take a second to introduce you to my options live trading room um, uh, this is where we focus on trading setups with options and stocks options on stocks the stocks again we normally include and follow uh, include Apple Google Amazon uh, Tesla is one it's not on this list Goldman Sachs MasterCard LinkedIn Netflix etc um, these stocks have actively traded weekly options that provide us really good option liquidity pretty tight uh, price spreads on the options and it allows us to trade intraday trades and then also we, we look at one to three day swing trading setups um, and we, we can trade those with ease normally we utilize directional puts and calls and then during to the middle to the later part of the week we start to add an additional focus of selling credit spreads um, to take advantage of, of time decay on the weekly expiring uh, the expiring weekly options um, the trading room hours are normally 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. Um, <laughs> that wouldn't that be cool 9, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the four hours and then that uh, the, the normal price for the trading room is hundred and forty nine dollars a month now if um, you know if these opportunities of trading options on stocks sounds exciting and profitable to you and you'd like to experience more go ahead and send me an email at dave at microquant.com and I can help you get a free pass to visit the options live trading room and experience the, the trading for yourself we have a lot of fun in there and um, you know we, we've been making uh, we've been consistently profitable it's been a lot of fun okay any any last minute questions okay well thank you again for uh, spending uh, time with us this afternoon in this webinar session I hope you found it informative and exciting and again any questions or comments can be directed to uh, support at microquant.com or directly to me at dave at microquant.com again my name is Dave Aquino uh, have a great afternoon and thanks again for joining us